Hey everybody and welcome to this Unity tutorial where I will be teaching you how to make a script that will allow you to be a Jedi in Unity. So let's demonstrate what I mean by that. We have a bunch of cubes around here. They're all simple cubes made with uh, Pro Builder and they have rigid bodies attached and some box colliders. So let's see what happens. I left click from the center of the screen. You can see that little red dot. That's the indicator for the center. So I don't have to actually know how to aim, which is not really good since I play Counter Strike, but never mind. So let's left click, left clicking in 3, 2, 1, boom. And there we go, we have our little cube, it's in our hand, and it's floating, it's rotating, and what we can do with it is we can fire it. So right click, boom, there we go. And we can pull another cube, and then we can fire it, and then we can... Oh, oh, what, do we, what we can do also is release it midair. So we start pulling it, and then we right click before it reaches us, and then we sort of like have a whip effect. So. Okay, this is not what I expected, but okay. Okay, yeah, this thing can get some serious air airtime if you put the force modifier to a high value, which I, of course, have done. But before we go talking about force modifiers and everything, let's go to the code in Visual Studio and let's see what this is all about, how we made this. This code is available in the link in the description. It's a paste bin link, so you can just copy paste it freely. It has some Unity tooltips if you wish to use it in your own project. It has a lot of comments so you guys can learn from it more easily. And I really hope I did a good job of commenting. If anybody has any more suggestions or criticism, feel free to shoot it in the comments. But let's start with it. Now before we go through the variables, we'll just go through the update method first and then as we need each variable, I will go up there and explain it. So the first thing we have is a raycast hit variable, which will just store the data about the hit object that our raycast method hit. And it's only going to fire if we click the left mouse button. So if input got dot get mouse button down of zero, which is of course the left mouse button, we then send out a raycast from where? From the transform.position. Now in this case the transform.position is our camera. So I, I attach the script to the camera and I want to fire the raycast from the center of the screen to the world, which is of course transform.forward for our main camera. We store that information as I said earlier in the hit variable and we don't have any we don't have any constraints as far as distance is concerned. We're a super Jedi, we're better than Master Yoda. Now then, if we hit our an object, and that object has a pullable tag, so the tag of the object is equal to the pullable tag. As you can see, the pullable tag is a tag that's used to determine if an object is pullable or not. Of course, if we hit that object, this coroutine will start and we will pass on the hit.transform. Now, this is the transform of the object we hit and we pass it on to the coroutine, which is right over here. Now, in this coroutine, what we do is we have a rigid body. So we just get a component from this transform so we don't have to do t.get component rigid body every time we want to use it. This just keeps it much cleaner. Now, in the infinite while loop, we first do this, this thing. If we get the right mouse button, we just stop pulling the thing. So if we got the right mouse button, everything is done. We break out of the while loop, the coroutine is done, and we don't do anything more. The next thing we do is we calculate the distance to the hand. So the distance to the hand, well, it's a vector 3 distance from t dot position and hand dot position. Now what the hand is, that is the uh, destination that the object is going to be pulled to, towards. As you saw in my demonstration, it got pulled towards the camera, but I've set up a game object somewhere near the camera and parented it to the camera, so it goes there and not to the camera itself, because then we wouldn't be able to see anything. So that's it, that's the hand game object. I'll show everything later in the Unity editor. Now what we do is, if the distance to the hand is less than the position distance threshold, we set the position of the transform to the position of the hand. Why do we need this? Well, if the position to the hand, if I'm sorry, if the distance to the hand is, for example, 0.1f or 0.05f, which is, of course, 10 or 5 centimeters in world units, then we just assume, okay, the object is pulled all the way. Why? We can't just say if the distance to the hand uh, is, when the distance to the hand is zero, well, because the floating point operation and the phys physics calculations aren't that precise so you will never get a zero as the distance between these two objects if they if, if one of them uses like physics calculations and moves around and it'll just be a mess so you have to have a certain threshold which i've called 
position distance threshold and I've put it over here. Okay, so now once we set the position of the object to be position of the hand, we set the parent of the object to be the hand, and we set the constraints to rigid body constraints that freeze position. That's because I want the object to be able to rotate freely in my hand. Why? Well, because I just like the way it looks. Another thing, if you could, if you wanted to, you could just set the constraints to be freeze everything, or you can just set the body to be kinematic, and then in that case, it won't, it won't move at all, it won't rotate, but I like a little bit of rotation, so I left it there. And I've set the held object to be the transform. Now, the held object is this variable here. Once an object is in the hand, save it to this variable, so we need to save it because of this little thing, but we'll explain that a little bit later. Let's go back to our coroutine. Okay, so now that we've passed all these conditions, we then see, okay, let's calculate the direction of the pull. So the pull direction will ob obviously be from the position of the object towards our hand. And simple vector math tells us that it's the hand.position, so which is the destination, minus t.position, which is the origin, so destination minus origin, and that's the direction we need to uh, send the object flying to. Now, the next thing we do is we have this pull force variable. It's a simple vector 3. If we go up here, so a simple vector 3, and it says the direction of the force that is pulling the object. Then, of course, that's not just the direction, but also the magnitude. Now, what I do is I get the pull direction, and then I set normalize it. Of course, I need to normalize the thing because I want it to have a magnitude of 1, as it says, returns this vector with a magnitude of 1. And then I multiply it by my modifier. Now, the modifier variable is a simple float, and it says force modifier, tweak it to suit your needs. So the higher the modifier, the faster your object will accelerate towards the hand. Okay, awesome. Now that we have our pull force and our pull direction, we have our first if statement in the physics calculation. So if our velocity is less than the max velocity, and the max velocity is again a simple float variable, and it's a, the maximum velocity of the object being pulled, of course you want to limit the velocity because if the object is really far away, it will just keep accelerating. We don't want that because then physics will get completely broken at some point after a certain amount of um, time and speed. So we just limit it that way. And then we see if distance to hand is greater than the velocity distance threshold. Now, why is this? Well, if the object is really close to us and then we try to pull it to our hand, it won't, it won't accelerate enough and then it won't ever reach our hand because if it's really light and the force modifier is not good enough, then the object will just float midair and never reach our hand because the gravity acting on the object will be just too strong. So this is why we need this. So if the object is within a certain distance of us, then we just set it to maximum velocity to make sure it will always reach our hand. But if those both conditions are true, so if the distance to hand is greater than the velocity distance threshold, and the uh, velocity magnitude of the rigid body is less than the max velocity, we keep adding force to the object. So we go rigid body dot add force, and this is the pull force. Of course, we calculated it right here. And we go force mode dot force. Now, of course, you could use force mode dot accelerate if you want to ignore mass. I did not want to ignore body mass. I just left it there because I think it's a little more fun. So if you have like a small, tiny cube, then anybody can pull it. But if you have like a big, huge, giant ship in the middle of the Dagobah forest, then you'd need a Jedi Master to pull the object and it will go like really slow and sluggish and it'll, it'll be really awesome. But if any of these failed, any of these conditions failed, then we just set the velocity of the object to the pull direction times max velocity. Now, of course, this is a little bug here, which I'm just gonna fix. I first need to normalize this vector, so we have the magnitude of the velocity to be the max velocity. And that's it, that's it for the coroutine, so this keeps on going and going, and once it reaches either this a break condition or this break condition, which I explained earlier, then it'll just end. Now in the update, we have another thing. We have the if input get dot get mouse button down of one, which is of course listening for the right click. Now when the user presses right click, we want to shoot out the object from our hand towards whatever. 
Now, of course, if we don't hold anything, then there's nothing to shoot. So if our held object is not null, we can then continue. If it is null, well, there's really no point in continuing now, is there? Okay, the first thing we do is once the object is uh, preparing to be launched, we set the parent of the object to be null because we don't really need to have any parent object. We get the rigid body component and we remove all the constraints that we set right over here. As you can see, we just remove these constraints by setting them to none. We also set the velocity to be the transform.forward of the camera and times the throw velocity. Now the throw velocity is another flow variable and that's the velocity at which the object is thrown. I've just put a separate little variable for that just so you can throw it out faster than you could pull it. And at the end we just set the held object to be null so once we fire it we can't keep launching it over and over. Now let's go back to Unity and I can show you all of these how they're set up in the editor and how you can set them up yourself. Back in Unity, we can see that under our player character, which just has a simple character controller and movement scripts, we have our main camera, which has a bunch of random stuff to make this video look better, and the pull script that is going to be available in the description. And under the main camera, we have another object that is, of course, the hand object, which is going to be the destination for each object that is going to be pulled towards the player. So that's that's uh, really neat. As you can see, it's not really too close, so nothing goes clipping through the camera, but it's relatively close, so we can imagine that being the hand, and in the scene view, you can see it right over here. But for now, let's just turn off the mesh render because we really don't need it. You can, of course, remove the mesh render again later if you want to completely, but I just like to keep it here for debug purposes. Under the main camera we go to the pull script and as you can see we have the hand right here and it has it says that this is the hand that is the target destination of the pull and it's referencing this hand right here that's under the main camera. The pullable tag is a tag that is used to determine if an object is pullable or not and as you can see it's it's named pullable and if we click any of these cubes so let's click this cube for example you can see that a tag of the cube is indeed pullable and that's why we can pull it Furthermore, we have the force modifier. Now, this is just experimental. I've played with various values and I've noticed that somewhere between 10 and 16 is a sweet spot for objects that are around one kilogram in mass. Of course, you can change the mass of the rigid bodies in the, in the inspector of the rigid body of each of these, but I've left it at one, so that's the mass I'm working with. Uh, the held object is the object that is held once it reaches the hand and let's demonstrate how that works so if we click play and we pull an object there we go and you can see the held object is set to the cube that we've pulled and if we launch it to infinity and beyond it gets set to none of course the position threshold is 0.1 because that's the position threshold at which we consider the object pulled and the velocity the distance threshold is set to 2 because, well, I've just experimented and I've noticed that that works best. Of course, this entirely depends on your project setup, how the scales work in your world. So you're just going to have to play with that around a little bit and see what works best for you. But I'm sorry if I'm just randomly doing stuff around here, but this is just so much fun. <laughs> Uh, the next thing we have is the max velocity. Of course, this is again experimental, whatever works best for you. You'll just have to, you know, experiment a little bit and see what works. And the throw velocity is again the, the throw velocity, which is the most independent of all of these because there's no physics interactions, at least as, as far as pulling is concerned. So we just fire it into distance. And if maybe I can just, oh my God, I actually did it. Oh my god, I actually pulled the object midair. I ha this is the first time I've actually managed... Yeah, oh my god, I did it again. I swear to god, this is the first two times I've actually done this <laughs> midair. And, and it happens while I'm recording the video. Okay, awesome. So yeah, that's it. As I said, the code is in the description. It's fully commented with tooltips, so you can use it, use it more easily. If you guys have any video requests, I'd like to hear them in the future. If you have any criticism, of course, please leave them in the comments. I would appreciate a like and subscribe, and I will see you all next time. Goodbye.